They're the Skechers Go Run Ride 7. <laughs> YouTube, what's up? Happy Saturday, it is October 5th and it is a beautiful crisp day here in New York and I am actually not running. I am going to go for a walk around my neighborhood because I did a seven miler yesterday and I have a 5K tomorrow so I want my legs to be a little fresh in case I wanna kick it up a notch tomorrow. A lot of you guys have been asking me about my running shoe rotation and what I wear on different runs and the truth is, is I have a lot of running sneakers and I use them all for different things. So when I come back from my walk, I'm gonna run you through what I wear for what type of run and why I like each of those shoes. All right, so I'm back from my walk, got the glasses on and I'm ready to talk shoes. So I'm gonna start with my trainers and go all the way up to my racing shoes and I'm gonna discuss the specs of each shoe and then kind of what I like and maybe don't like about each, but why they work for me. So we're gonna start with my daily trainer, my workhorse, my main go-to, and it's the Skechers Go Run Ride 7. To give you some of the specs on this shoe, so in the heel we have 30 millimeters, and in the forefoot we have 24 millimeters for a six millimeter drop. And the weight on this shoe is 7.8 ounces for a women's size eight. Sorry guys, we're going by women's sizing today. Yes, I know what you're thinking, Skechers, but trust me, this shoe is amazing. And Skechers performance really should be treated differently than the memory foam mom shoe shape ups that you're used to. So the Skechers Go Run Ride 7 is great for a lot of different reasons. And the first one is that it's simple. There's nothing crazy to this shoe. It's just a running shoe that works and that's hard to come by sometimes in this day and age. Let's start with the upper. It's a knit upper and it's a pretty thick and sturdy one at that. Um, but it's good because it keeps my foot in place when I'm going around turns or trying to pick up the pace. Uh, it has two stitched on overlays right here in the forefoot. And I know that a lot of people complain about that, saying it looks cheap or outdated, but it works for me. So you know what? Maybe it looks cheap, maybe I look like a grandpa, but I'm just gonna go with it because I haven't ever had any problems. The tongue is nice and thin, but it has padding on it so that I never feel irritated by it. And of course, thanks Skechers, there's a pull tab on this shoe. A PSA to all running shoe brands. It is 2019. If your shoe does not have a pull tab, why? Another great thing about this shoe is the midsole. Skechers uses the Flight Gen Foam, which is super light and really responsive. Not only is it responsive, but it's plush, it's protective, it's really, really cushioned and feels great underfoot. A lot of Skechers running shoes have this thing called M-Strike, which is basically a technology that helps to roll you forward in your stride. If you can see right here in the shoe, basically it doesn't sit flat. It kind of curves upward and that is the M-Strike technology. There's almost, there's like a little bump right here and it helps to roll you forward so that your turnover is quicker, your stride is more efficient, and you just feel fresher. Moving on to the outsole of this shoe, we have not too much going on, but it's just enough to get the job done. There's a lot of exposed flight gen in the midfoot and a little bit in that forefoot, but it's really all you need. And last but certainly not least about the Go Run Ride 7 is the price. This shoe on Running Warehouse is under $50. And if you use my code RUNHELLER on runningwarehouse.com, you get 10% off of that, and that's even less than $50, and just buy it, just buy the shoe, it's amazing. I love it, go and ride seven, go get it today. Okay, thanks, great, bye. Next up is a shoe from a brand that I absolutely love. They got me back into running in 2014, and that is the Hoka One One Rincon. All right, that wasn't as smooth, but we made it work. So as for the stats of the Rincon, the heel is 32 millimeters and the forefoot is 27 millimeters, making this shoe have a drop of five millimeters. And that's pretty much my sweet spot. I really don't like to go too far under that because I tend to get some calf pain. The weight on this shoe is 6.6 .6 ounces for a women's size eight. So there are a lot of things that I like about this shoe. 
Uh, the upper is a really light, breathable mesh, and it's really comfortable on foot. The upper does pucker a little bit here, but I also think that might just be because I have a really narrow foot. Another really great thing about this upper is the oversized pull tab in the back of the shoe. Every shoe should have a pull tab, and if they wanna make it this big, go for it. The bigger, the better. That sounded weird. My favorite part about this shoe is the full compression EVA midsole that it has. It's so soft, it feels like you're running on pillows. Another thing that really works for me in this shoe and I really like is the revised early stage Meta Rocker. And that is kind of like the Skechers in where it has some kind of technology that helps to roll you forward in your stride. If I hold this shoe flat, you'll see that it kind of curves upward. That's the Meta Rocker. Going down to the outsole of the shoe, we have pretty much an entirely exposed EVA outsole. It's kind of the major flaw of this shoe. It, 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 durability is, is the issue here. It's definitely something that's not gonna last you a super long time. I've had this shoe for definitely well over 50 miles at this point, and it's okay, but there's definitely a lot of fraying going on here in the forefoot especially. I've used this shoe for tempo runs, for 5Ks, for 10 milers. You can definitely run a 5K in a shoe and you could absolutely run a marathon in it. It's, uh, it's $115 on Running Warehouse and with my code RUNHELLER, you can get it for 10% off of that. So I would definitely recommend it. It's really versatile and I think that's what makes this shoe special. My next shoe is from a brand that I've had a love-hate relationship with in my running career. I use this shoe for days that I want to pick up the pace and that is the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel. So this is a really interesting shoe and I don't think it's for everyone, but I've found a way to incorporate it into my training that works for me. As for the specs on this shoe, the heel is 24 millimeters and the forefoot is 18 millimeters, making it a six millimeter drop. The weight is 6.2 ounces for a women's size eight. So it's super light, which definitely helps on those tempo days. So the upper of this shoe is a thin engineered mesh and it's a booty construction, which means it's all one piece. It has some trace fiber stitching on the midfoot to keep your foot in place and lock down in there because you need that when you have a booty upper, there's really not much support for your foot. Instead of using eyelets like a standard shoe does, it has this sort of bungee cord like thing. I don't know why they did this, but it works fine. Here's a negative. What's this heel missing guys? right, no pull tab. I don't need to say much more, you know what I'm thinking. What really sold me on the Rebel is the fuel cell foam in the midsole. Apparently this is New Balance's most responsive foam, but I also feel like it's really cushioned and soft. I ran a bunch of faster paced five milers and 10Ks in the shoe, and I never felt like, oof, like my foot feels like it needs a little extra something there. There's just a little bit less here in the midfoot than there are in my other shoes. And that's why it's not exactly a daily trainer for me. And it's more for a day that I wanna pick up the pace. The outsole of the shoe is also pretty unique looking. They have this crystallized rubber that kind of dips all the way into the midfoot. And then you have a little bit of the rubber on the heel and then some exposed fuel cell material. It performs well on wet roads, on dry roads, on dirt, gravel. The one thing that's controversial about this shoe that a lot of people are kind of on the fence about is that if you turn it this way, you have this flare out here on the lateral side of the shoe. If you're a pronator, then you might have an issue in this shoe because if you're already turning inwards, this is gonna make you do it more so, I would think. But I am a little bit of a pronator and I, I've been fine. So like I said, I use this shoe on my fast days, days that I wanna pick up the pace. For those days that you're looking to be a speed demon, you could try this shoe. It's $130 on runningwarehouse.com, but if you use my code RUNHELLER in all caps, you get it for 10% off. The next shoe on my list is one that I'm really not gonna give too much away about because I'm still in the process of reviewing it, and that is the Hoka One One Carbon X. The heel is 35 millimeters and the forefoot is 30 millimeters, making the shoe a five millimeter drop. And the weight is 7.6 ounces for a woman size eight. And I've been using this for my longer runs where I'm trying to maintain a certain pace. 
Uh, I'm probably gonna use this shoe for a lot of my half marathon training coming up. But there are some things that I wouldn't use this shoe for, and you'll find that out in my full review. The Hoka One One Carbon X is $180 on runningwarehouse.com, but if you use my code RUNHELLER in all caps, you can get it for 10% off. The next shoe on my list and the final shoe on my list is my racing shoe. It's pretty much my go-to for all things when I want to totally throw down. And that is the one, the only Nike Vaporfly 4%. No, this is not the newest version of this shoe. There's the Vaporfly 4% Fly in it. There's the Next Percent, but I am too poor to purchase either of those shoes. That's right, let's just go right into price on this shoe. It is $250, and on runningwarehouse.com, I don't think you can even use my code. The heel is 39 millimeters and the forefoot is 29 millimeters, giving the shoe a 10 millimeter drop. The weight is 6.7 ounces in a men's size nine because this shoe is a unisex shoe. The mesh in the upper is pretty thin and if you can see here, there's a lot of really kind of wide holes for breathability in the upper and that's definitely great when you're trying to run as fast as you probably are trying to run in this shoe. Oh, the heel counter on the shoe? There is none. So you're probably asking yourself at this point, why on earth would anybody pay $250 for a running shoe? And I'll tell you why. It's because all of the marathoners in the New York City Marathon wore this shoe and Shalane Flanagan won the marathon in this shoe. But the other reason is the midsole. And that is the combination of Nike's most responsive and probably the most responsive foam on the market, the Zoom X foam, also accompanied by a carbon fiber plate in the middle. If you step one foot into this shoe and just walk around, you'll see exactly what I mean. It's like you're walking on trampolines and when you're running, it feels even crazier. Basically what the Vaporfly does is it helps you get to a pace that in a normal running shoe, you would be absolutely killing yourself to be at. Get it like 4%, 4% faster. That's what it means. The outsole on the shoe is really narrow and the traction is okay, but it's not amazing. Uh, I definitely think it could be a little better. For me personally, my foot has a tendency to move around in the shoe a little bit. There's no support in the arch and there's no support in the heel counter. So it makes for a pretty crazy ride sometimes that I'm a little skittish about. Overall, this is a fantastic shoe. I think it's definitely worth the $250 price tag, believe it or not. So that concludes my running shoe rotation. We started this video when it was light out. It is now dark, so that's how long it took me to shoot this. Thanks guys for sticking with me. If you have any questions about any of the shoes at all, please comment below. I would be more than happy to answer any questions. I'm also curious to know what you guys are running in, so please also leave a comment if you are in a shoe that I should be trying out. Make sure that you subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed it. Get out there, get on the grind, and don't forget to run like Heller. I'll see you next time. What are you doing? I'm gathering acorns for, for indoor de decor. Okay. Who looks weirder, you gathering the acorns or me with this gigantic camera? I don't know. <laughs>